Hey, this is Pastor Danny. Welcome to Hear, Believe, and Receive. Well, just a few more days till Christmas. I hope you're all ready to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior. Man, what a great day. Oh, thank you, Jesus, that you came. Thank you. Now, look, we've been looking at the books of Exodus and Genesis in the last few weeks. One of the things I want to look at today is what do you do when you have heard from God? In Exodus 3 and 4, you remember what Moses' reaction was to God telling him that he, God, wanted him to go to the children of Israel and tell them that he was sent by the God of Abraham and of Isaac and Jacob. And he was to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let them go. Remember in Exodus 3.11, Moses said, Who am I to go to the Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? Then God begins to assure Moses that he will be with him. Then in Exodus 4.1, Moses said something like, But suppose they won't listen to me. and Well, it won't believe me. It won't believe that you've sent me. Remember that? Then in Exodus 4.10, Moses tells the Lord he can't speak too well. How about letting someone else do this? Now Moses is talking to God out of a burning bush, and God has to talk him into doing the job. Moses does finally agree and goes to do what God has told him. Let's look at another story about hearing what God wanted someone to do in their reaction to that request. In the book of Judges, we read about a man that God called to free the people from the Midianites. His name was Gideon. In Judges chapter 6, we see that the children of Israel were being treated badly, very badly, by the Midianites, and they cried out to the Lord. That sounds like the Egyptian thing all over again. Remember when they cried out to the Lord and he heard them? Well, they cried out and the Lord heard them. And an angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said to them, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. That was verse 12. You know what this mighty man of valor was doing in verse 11? He was hiding wheat from the Midianites. Why was he hiding it? The Midianites could, would come and take it if they found it. So he was hiding it so he'd have something to eat. Do you think he thought that he was a mighty man of valor? I don't know if he did or not, but in the next verse, verse 13, he said, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. This sounds like some people when they have lived their life without God, not doing anything God has told them to do, and then blame God for all that has happened to them. Do you know anybody like that? Verse 14 tells us that the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? Wow! Go in thy might, Gideon's might, the man hiding the wheat so he can have something to eat? Does that sound a little like Romans 4, 17, where God calls those things which be not as though they were? When God says it, believe it. Gideon was a mighty man of valor because God said he was. You or what God says you are. Believe it and live it. The key to that was the next thing that was said. Have not I sent thee? Have not I sent thee? Romans 8.31 tells us that if God is with you, who can be against you? If he sends you, you can do it. Nothing can stand against you. The devil and his people may try, but they cannot stop you as long as you keep your trust in God. If you read Exodus 6, 7, and 8, you will see that Gideon did what God said he could do with just 300 men and some lamps and pitchers. There were thousands of the enemy. It is amazing what God can do with a little if you trust him.
You may say, I don't have much. I can't do much. But if you trust him, you can do a lot. In the New Testament, there is a story in the book of Luke about a young girl hearing from God. Luke 1, verses 26 through 38. I'm going to read that. And I, as you read it, just, just listen to what it says. Got to get it in my phone here. Are you ready? For it's verse one, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things, from the very first to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things which wherein thou hast been instructed. There were in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were, not, were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to customs of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him the angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. Sounds a little bit like um, Moses talking to God about, I'm not sure I can do this. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God, and I am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not be able to speak until the day of these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. For he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel said unto her, and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when he saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Notice Mary asked a question. 
And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And I hope you people realize that. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. Now, that's the story of the angel coming to see her and to tell her what was going to happen. So she had an angel appear to her Gideon and Moses had an angel, or a burning bush appeared to them. The angel said, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And she was afraid at first. The angel then told her not to be afraid, that she had found favor with God. The angel then told her about Jesus and how his birth would come about and what Jesus would do. Mary Ask one question. How can this be, since I do not know a man? She hears this miraculous word and has one question. The angel answers her and tells her how it would happen. She then makes one statement. <laughs> Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be according to your word. One question, one statement. And she's all in. God said it. Let's do it. Wow. Man, if we could be that way today. When God tells you to do something, just say, let it be like you said, God. I'm going to do it. She didn't ask a bunch of questions and make excuses or try to make changes. She just agreed to it and did it. She had faith in what God said through his, this angel and knew he could and would make it happen. The angel then left and Mary went to see Elizabeth. In Luke 1, verse 45. Elizabeth tells Mary, Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. You know, if you believe what God's told you, if you believe what He's told you in His Word, it will be fulfilled in your life if you believe it. Now have a Merry Christmas and remember the reason for the season. And if you don't have a home church, oh, you need to come here, Pastor Simone. Uh, she'd love to have you visit our church. It's called Go Church. See you next time, and be blessed and have a Merry Christmas.